Hello and welcome to Standard Sports Ashes coverage. I'm joined by Will McPherson at the SCG to review the first day of the fourth test. Um, a really rain interrupted first day of the fourth test, but at the end of it, Australia having won the toss and elected to bat 126 for three. Will about even? Yeah, almost even. I'd say after a pretty stop-start kind of day, we had we had four uh, sort of bite-sized chunks of a session. None of them kind of a, none of them amounted to full sessions but um they, they were each sort of significant in their own little ways um England picked up two late wickets which have swung things back in their direction but Australia was certainly the keener team to leave the field at the end of play it would have been a tough uh, final half hour when the rain came down uh for a final time but yeah England England won't be unhappy with how they're placed given they were asked to bowl first on what is a pretty flat pitch Let's start at the toss because typically now that the series has gone, one probably went maybe not in Root's favour and he didn't win it, but but this was kind of the proverbial, not a bad one to lose. I mean, England bowling in, in these kind of conditions almost gave you a little taste of what might have happened maybe in the first test, particularly, I suppose, he's saying Albert Stewart Broad getting David Warner. Yeah, the, the, the warnings all week were that the pitch looked a bit green but would be quite flat and, it, and that trait played true. Um Root said he would have batted just as Pat Cummins chose to. And I'm frankly, as, a, as an English uh, follower, I am pretty glad that England didn't have to bat today. I, yeah. think, I think that would have been quite ugly. Um, and they would have been far more than three down at the end of the day. Uh, they will hope that the, the conditions are a little better when they come to bat. Um, yeah, I think, you know, Luke Root lost two tosses in Adelaide and Melbourne, which just were absolute dead certs for what you do. This one was a little bit more on the fence for, you know, in the press box here, there were some people saying bowl, some people saying bat. Uh, generally, the locals said bat, which is a pretty good guide. But um, yeah, I think uh, Root will have been relieved that it was David Warner and Marcus Harris with their pads on rather than Zach Crawley and Tiba Mead. Yeah, that kind of having to, to keep coming on and off doesn't strike me as the best thing for batsmen who, who can't buy a run you know, throughout the throughout the whole series. Um, just on England's bowling attack then, obviously Ollie Robinson was the man to make way for Stuart Broad, which we knew already. I mean, Broad looked a little bit kind of angsty as is his way, really. Even even when he was get got that wicket of Warner, it was a little bit like, you know, it, here's why you should have had me in the side earlier kind of thing. Yeah, Broad's made plain his uh, displeasure at missing out on surfaces which he believes, and you know, it, uh, it, this is logical. Would have suited his game in Brisbane and Melbourne, and he's had to play at Adelaide and here, where the pitch is flatter and harder work. But he got David Warner's wicket for the 13th time in Test cricket. It was, a, it was an absolutely vital wicket. Australia put on 50 for the first wicket. England really needed that. It came at a perfect time, uh, and and Broad didn't bowl too badly. He looked slightly short of a gallop, but then. Can't really be surprised. He, he got injured in the summer, so he's essentially played uh, one match before this one in 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 five months. So for him, you know, hopefully he's easing into his work and he's uh, will be better for for it tomorrow. So a fairly quiet day at Sydney does give us quick chance to to mention events at Mount Manganui. Um, a remarkable result for Bangladesh, I suppose. Either optimism or frustration from an English point of view, depending on how you look at it. Seeing a, a team go away from home and upset the odds in a in a big way. Yeah, that's an iconic win. Um, massive congrats to Bangladesh. Uh, I was I was at their first win over England in 2016 in, in Dhaka and um, the excitement in the stadium was was something I'll never forget. Um, obviously, they won't have had many fans there in Mount Mongolia this week, but uh, <laughs> New, Zealand's, New Zealand's a special place for them, given what happened in Christchurch a couple of years ago. Of course. Um, so, so for them to, to pull off that win is, is something very special indeed and, and we'll... we'll um, you know, it transcends that game, I think, and it and is a moment in Test cricket history that should be savoured. Well, congratulations to Bangladesh. Um, fingers crossed we'll have a bit more play to talk about this time tomorrow, although I know this this weather is set to hang about through the week, which may help England's cause. But uh, we'll see how we go. Take care, Will, and we'll speak tomorrow.